Hungary, Rachel Morin, Lakin Riley, they are young women who were brutally assaulted and killed by some of the men who were released at the beginning of the administration. No, Do you no, no, owe Brett, those families I think it's really, I think an it, apology? Let me just say, first of all, those are tragic cases. There's no question about that. There is no question about that. And I can't imagine the pain that the families of those victims have experienced for a loss that should not have occurred. So that is true. It is also true that if a border security had actually been passed nine months ago, it would be nine months that we would have had more border agents at the border, more support for the folks who are working around the clock trying to hold it all together. Madam Vice President. To ensure that no future harm would occur. And this election in 20 days will determine whether we have a president of the United States who actually cares more about fixing a problem, even if it is not to their political advantage in an election, because there was a solution, Brett. In her first formal sit-down interview with Fox News, Vice President Kamala Harris facing questions on migrant crime on their watch, the administration, including the tragic case of Rachel Morin, a Maryland mother of five who was allegedly murdered by an illegal migrant. Rachel's mother, Patty, joins us right now from Maryland. Patty, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You bet. Um, she never answered the question. Brett was asking, do you owe an apology to the families? Does she? I think that she does. I think that actions speak louder than words. And she's had almost four years to approve her medal. And by her actions, I would say that she puts illegal immigrants above the American people. Right. And she has allowed all these deaths to happen on her watch. Well, you know, uh, during the interview, and I'm sure you saw it, uh, sh whenever there was a, a question, uncomfortable question regarding the border or migration, she would pivot back to, well, Donald Trump uh, torpedoed that, uh, that border bill. Your daughter was murdered over a year ago, and the border bill uh, was not brought up and discussed until May of this year. So it would not have saved your daughter's life. It would not, and I think the only reason why they tried to push this border bill was to save face because they knew that um, this invasion happened on their watch, and willfully, I believe it happened. And then also, um, if the American people actually read the bill, they would see that the majority of the money was going to foreign interests like Ukraine and Israel, and very little was actually going to the border. And what went to the border was to actually facilitate bringing more illegal immigrants into the country, not mm -hmm. securing and closing the border. As we look at your beautiful family, Patty, these images, mm -hmm. uh, do you blame the Biden administration for the death of your girl? I do. And the reason why I do is because there were policies that were already in place. You don't need to change the law. You're the president, vice president. Those policies were in place. Mr. Trump had them in place. And they revoked them all, more out of spite towards Mr. Trump, I believe, mm -hmm. than anything. And they completely opened up our border to a massive invasion of illegal immigrants like none ever seen in the history of our country. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I completely and totally blame them. So she wouldn't answer whether or not she owed an apology. She said it was tragic. But she did say, I can't imagine the pain these families experience. Patty, tell her the pain your families yeah. experience. Oh, my gosh. Man, if I start telling you the pain, I'm going to be crying. Um, this past weekend, I went down to Kentucky. It was uh, a little over a year ago when my daughter, we heard the news that my daughter had passed. I was in Kentucky because a grandbaby had passed. And to sit with mm. my family a year later and to see them still mourning the death, not only of their own child, but their sister, and to speak to the other mom and listen to her pain, it was... It was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking for me 
because now I understood, at the time I didn't understand the loss of a child, but now I understand that loss. And it's something that never goes away. It's some days, you know, I mean, you're okay, but you, there never goes a day by, that was poor English, where you don't think, I don't think about Rachel, I don't cry for Rachel, I don't think about her children, and there's never a day, and I've talked to people that have lost children, and they said the pain never goes away, that I'm going to walk with it the rest of my life. That's an unbearable thing. I want to feel happy again, and I don't know how to do that. Sorry. No, that's real. That's how you feel. Yeah. It's like, this should not be. And if they had secured the borders and just... American people should come first. That's why we elect these officials, to protect our country, not to open the border and allow all these sworn enemies of our country into our country and then give them aid and comfort above the American people. That's just not right. It isn't right. Patty, Sorry. thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. God, God bless you and your family. Thank you. I Rachel Morin was 37 when she was murdered.